What's my role? Cook or arsonist? Greetings, fellow descendants. My name is Lars, and today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite characters in the game, Blair. When I first started playing First Descendant, I looked around at a bunch of different characters, trying to see who I wanted to play, who I wanted to pick up, and, you know, try stuff out with. And Blair immediately jumped out to me because of the fact that he is a fire-based character. He can throw down fire puddles, throw large fireballs, and even cast a huge flame throw out of his hand, which is just super cool. I've always loved fire mages and fire-based characters in, in other games, so I thought, okay, Blair is really cool, I'm going to try him. And then I got really bummed out because Blair had no synergy in his own kit between his between his stuff because his passive wanted you to put down fire zones in order to build up your skill critical hit rate. And then his second skill wanted you to absorb the fire zones in order to gain a skill power buff, thus canceling out the effect of the passive. And so... He just felt really lackluster because his kit just didn't function very well. And there just wasn't much going on with him that made him any good, really. So I kind of tried out some stuff and then put him on the put him on the shelf for a while, hoping that he would get some buffs. And lo and behold, with season one, we have the Blair buffs that we've been wanting. He is now a fully functioning character. His kit actually works now, and he can be a formidable force. So today I want to go over two builds that I've been having a blast playing. Uh, they are by no means perfect, nor are they necessarily going to be as strong as like the strongest meta builds in the game right now. But you know what? It's still a good step in the right direction, and he's still perfectly functional and able to perform all levels of content in this game with these builds. So let's go ahead and get into them with our first one being our mobbing setup. Okay, so before we get into the overall build, let me just go over Blair's base kit real quick and show you what he just does normally. So I've unequipped all my extra mods. So Blair's passive is the Pitmaster. You gain a 5% skill critical hit race rate increase per stack up to a maximum of five stacks for each fire zone you have placed, as well as a default 10% skill critical hit damage increase that you just get for having any fire zone on the battlefield. So what you're going to be able to do with this, since this is a flat buff added to your character, you're going to place as many fire zones as possible and you're going to get a large boost to your skill critical hit rate while the fire zones are active. This can be done via your first skill, Blaze Up, which lets you place a fire pit on the ground below you. This has three stacks to it that you can utilize, so you can drop three very quickly, and it will and it will come off of cooldown one at a time. So once the first stack finishes, you'll get that back, then you'll still start the cooldown of the second stack. Then you have the Extinguish skill, which is going to suck up any fire puddles that you have, not the puddle on the ground, that's the what it used to be, but you're actually you're going to suck up the essence of the fire zone and grant yourself a uh, MP recovery per flame zone that you've absorbed and a skill power modifier increase as well. That's going to be good to help boost you and recover your MP while you're running around and laying stuff down. Up next, we have Burn Taste, which is a flamethrower. He shoots it out of his hand, and you're just going to use this sometimes to clear out like larger enemies that aren't getting killed by some of your other things. It's a nice skill. But we're not, it's not the main focus of it, either of the builds here today. And finally, we have our ultimate Deadly Cuisine, which throws a large fireball out. Once it either reaches a certain point in its trajectory or it collides with something, either an enemy or the floor, it will explode and shoot out tiny fireballs, which will create flame zones for the rest of your kit. So this is going to be the primary way that we're going to throw out a lot of flame zones quickly is by using Deadly Cuisine. And so this is kind of how the build, the builds are going to function, is by utilizing this plus the blaze up to build up stacks of our pitmaster passive and get a lot of value. 
So let's go ahead and start with our first build, which I dub the Floor is Lava. So with this build, we're going to be utilizing the classic Chef Transcendent mod, which is not 100% required to start with, but it will help to give you more, more flame zones and more crit. Do not pay close attention to what this says on the mod. It's not, it's the old tooltip. It's actually been increased further beyond that. So let's go ahead and look at it. So your pit master has been upgraded. So now it has a maximum of seven stacks rather than five. Additionally, your ultimate now spews out five small fireballs upon completion rather than three. And your base uh, blaze up skill didn't really get changed much at all. It just, the icon changed uh, to match with the uh, transcendent mods icon. <clears throat> uh, so the point of this build is you're going to just spout fire puddles everywhere. We're just going to throw as many fire puddles down as possible to create zones where the enemies can't really stand without taking a lot of damage. Case in point, here are three enemies that we're going to go ahead and we're going to damage. Let me make sure I have... Yes. My Thunder Cage is what my reactors are attuned to for damage purposes. So I equipped it here so we can showcase the damage. I will also be running the dungeons with the Thunder Cage out anyway, because it, it lets me move faster than if I have my Enduring Legacy out. And it also helps me clear out some enemies that maybe survived the initial onslaught. But usually what I'll do is I'll run up to an area where there's a lot of enemies. I'll go ahead and throw my ult either at the enemies or above their heads. And then it will rain down fire upon them. And now they're going to be stuck in this pool of lava and taking a lot of damage. You can even add more by laying additional fire puddles down and sucking up the essence. And you can even use your flamethrower to add additional damage. As you can see, we're able to pile on a lot of quick damage onto enemies like this, clearing out large waves of enemies very quickly and clearing through stuff like dungeons and open world missions very easily. With the two of these combined, we can actually cover a lot of distance thanks to our mods. You can set up an area that's quite easy to maneuver here. See how much range we have just from the ones we've placed with our first skill. We can extend that to a whole area and just cover it with fire. And then the ultimate, when utilized properly, can create a large zone like this on its own with our additional three fire posts from our first skill providing the remainder of the coverage we need for any given confined space that we're going to run into in dungeons to take out the enemies. So that's kind of the whole point of the build, is to utilize the ultimate to lay down a lot of fire puddles, utilize the additional fire puddles from skill 1, and the second ability to regen your mana, and then you can flamethrower any additional enemies that come up to you, uh, and deal additional damage to them so you can burn through them faster. So let's go ahead and talk about the mods real quick, and how you can facilitate this sort of build. So first up, we have Classic Chef. You can do this without Classic Chef, because but you will essentially lock yourself at five max stacks of your passive and only three small fireballs will come out of the ultimate. You will have to utilize your first skill to place puddles, uh, more puddles around, and that's perfectly fine. So if you do not have this transcendent mod, you do not need to use it right away, but having this improves your passives uh, effect because you're going to get more critical hit rate out of your passive and you're going to be able to have more fireballs coming out of your ultimate, so your ultimate alone can cover a larger area on its own. So this is a nice transcendent mod, but it's not necessary. You can ignore this if you want to, or if you just don't have it, or if you don't have enough to upgrade it so you can slot it. Uh, likewise, the sub-attack module here I'm using is mid-air maneuvering. You can use any sub-attack module slot here. You can use any just shock punch module, like the blue ones, or you can use any of these multi-maneuvering, long-distance maneuvering, or the mid-air maneuvering whatever you feel more, most comfortable with or whatever you have leveled up, it's perfectly fine. You don't need to have any one in particular. So for the build, I have increased HP, increased defense, and battle of stamina to increase for my survivability. This grants me 340.8% uh, max HP and 160.4% boost to my defense. With, my, with Blair's base HP and defense being pretty good, as well as my external components focused primarily on HP with a memory focused on defense, you can get a lot of stats for survivability out of just three mods, and you're good to go to do anything in the game. You shouldn't struggle too much, as long as you're not sitting there eating 
insane amounts of damage unnecessarily. We have Fire Specialist for Firepower Increase. This is how we're going to increase the base damage of our Fire Puddles, our Ult, and our Flamethrower. We have Focus on Dimension to give us even more increase in damage to our base skill power. And gives us a little bit of extra, extra cooldown. You can go for a Dimension Specialist for more power, but we're getting more of our power from another source. Since our, since our passive is really good at getting us a lot of skill critical hit rate, we focused two spots here on boosting our skill critical hit damage so that we can get a lot more out of that. So we have skill concentration and front lines to boost our skill critical hit rate damage multiplier by a lot, as well as front lines adding skill critical hit rate percentage uh, by 27.7%, giving us a little bit of multiplier for our skill critical hit rate to boost even higher. Without this, with max stacks, we're looking at about a 55% base critical hit rate. And with this, it bumps it up to like 70 or so. So this gets us pretty high up there. In fact, I'll show you real quick exactly what the number is. So if we look here, our skill critical hit rate is 25.54% with just that little 27% multiplier active. And our skill critical hit rate damage is 3.992% um, with no additional buffs aside from the mods we have and, the, uh, and what's on my uh, reactor, which is... 27.1% uh, additional skill critical hit damage. So let's go ahead and I'm going to throw my ult over here and drop down two more fire puddles and that's seven stacks and let's see exactly where we're at. We're at 70.235% skill critical hit rate, skill critical hit rate and the skill critical hit damage is the same. Um, so we get a lot of crit going here very easily with this. Even if you don't have the full um, stacks. I'll just go ahead and show what it's like with three stacks once this expires. So even if you just have the three stacks here, you're still getting to about 44.695%, which is pretty good crit rate to work with. If you want to add more crit rate, you can, but I like, I like it where it's at. You still get a lot uh, once you use your ultimate. You can lay down a lot of fire puddles, and you can get a lot of crit rate. Even with this you still get a good um you still get a good rate for critting and the damage is still really nice um, additionally the remainder of the build is the skill extension to increase the duration for both of our buff from our second ability as well as the fire puddles uh, duration and our skill expansion which increases the radius of our fire puddles so that they cover a larger range without this skill your fire puddles are really small and they don't cover as much which makes the ultimate and all of the small fireballs puddles a lot more valuable because now you need those to cover a larger radius. This one is more important because it helps you cover a wider area. Um, and then skill extension just helps increase the duration so that you can work with having less of them around at a given time. And so that you can, and so your first skill can come off of cooldown much more often. And finally, we have nimble fingers to grant us some skill cooldown reduction by 25.6%. Uh, if you wanted to, if you wanted to opt out of using Classic Chef, you could swap the Nimble Fingers for a MP conversion, and that gives you 36.5% um, skill cooldown reduction at the cost of max MP minus 15, which if you get an extra like 150 MP on like your sensor as a roll, um, then that's fine. You can you can you can lose a chunk and still be fine. Even without an increase, you should be fine with max MP minus fifteen percent. So if you wanted more skill cooldown, you could do this. And if you didn't have the transcendent mod or didn't want to use it, you could swap to this. But I I'm fine with the nimble fingers and my um and the classic chef mod. These provide plenty to allow you to run around a dungeon or run around like a mission and just drop a bunch of fireballs down take out a bunch of enemies while the fire puddles are taking care of a section of enemies. You can use your thunder cage to, uh, d to defeat other enemies that are in the area or your flamethrower. If the enemies are a little tougher or they have shields you need to cut through them. It's a pretty fun build. It lets you run around and do mobbing stuff very easily. It's not going to be as potent as like an ultimate bunny who just runs around and one shots things out of existence, but it's more akin to what a, what a Valby can do, you know, you can run around and you can lay down these areas of damage that help you clear things faster. It's really, it's fun and it functions pretty well.
and you can get a lot of stuff done with it. So if you wanted to do this from scratch, like you just unlocked Blair, you got nothing. I don't remember which of these Blair starts with, so you're going to have to probably figure that out from the start. But I'll go ahead and go through the most important ones to start with early um, and what kind of build you should sort of be looking at uh, in the earlier stages. So we're going to go ahead and cut out a couple of these here. And so I would say these these three here are your first most important ones. Increase HP, Fire Specialist, and Increase Defense. Increase HP and Increase Defense will form the basis for your um, your survivability, while Fire Specialist provides you your base for your damage output. You can opt to do Spear and Shield over... Um, where is it? You can opt for Spear and Shield instead of Increased Defense. You are going to get a lot less defense value out of this. And you will get a little bit of extra skill power. So if you wanted that, you could. I like the added defense because it puts me like right in the sweet spot of about 24, 25,000. So the one defensive mod covers all of my defensive needs, really. And then increased HP gives you a lot of extra HP to work with. This alone boosts you to uh, boost me to 13,000 with my um, HP oriented. Uh, Uh, external components so that's pretty nice and fire specialist gives you a nice boost to your fire damage from there you should have at this point you would have uh you'd have 10 from midair you've had you would have 10 from your unslotted uh sub attack module and each of these would be worth 16 with a base of like 40 let's say in case you're not maxed out on your mastery level then you would have a base of 50 to work with, and this these would each be 16, so that would be 48. So you'd have 48 slots used up from these three, and you wouldn't really be able to slot a ton else until you started catalyzing. But once you start catalyzing and catalyze these three, that gives you 30 to work with, right? You could opt to not even be running this right now, and you wouldn't have room for it at the at the first anyway so you'd have 24 to work with here of your 50 then you could slot in your i would slot in at this point the skill expansion this gives you your added skill effect range so all of your fire puddles are now covering a wider area and with fire specialists they're getting more damage out of it so this alone gets you good coverage and good damage output uh, from there you can look to add your uh, front lines. You can look to add your front lines. Front lines adds the skill critical hit damage buff with some skill critical hit rate to work off of your passive a little bit better. So you can get a lot of value out of that. Um, and then you have the option. You can go ahead and push for your dimension, uh, focus on dimension, or you can push for your, your skill concentration to boost your damage more. And then I would say skill extension for the duration battle stamina for the extra survivability and the extra duration that it gives and then finally you would want to go ahead and slam your nimble fingers for the added cooldown and so essentially what you're doing is you want some survivability and some damage first then you want to expand your fire puddles next then you could add in more damage then you could add in more duration and cooldown uh, because early on when you're just doing stuff you probably don't need to worry about um, enemies being too bulky so the base fire puddles with just a little bit of extra enhanced damage from fire specialist and focus on dimension can probably get you a lot of what you need without needing to worry about all of the extra crit stuff you're going to get some value from crits anyway just from the kit and you can utilize your flamethrower more and your ultimate to do a lot of damage to bigger enemies and to help create more room for you as well as having a decent firearm set up like a thunder cage to help you barrel through larger groups of enemies or to take on bosses is really nice so again you don't need the classic chef mod but it is uh it is more fun the ultimate does provide more fire puddles for you and gives you a much larger area to cover with your fire puddles so that was that's kind of how i would like look to build into this from start is to go ahead and aim for those and obviously if you've got some uh slots that it already gives you like if it already gives you an almondine slot you can slot in some crit stuff a cerulean or a cerulean slot 
You can go ahead and slot any of these things if it's Rutile, Cerulean, or uh, Almondine. And if it gives you, you know, like your Malachite slot, you can slot in a Focus on Dimension faster and sort of go from there. So there's a lot of options there on what your base slots are. I, again, I forgot what they were. It's been a while. I started playing Blair like on the first couple days of when I started playing the game. And so I forgot exactly where the slots were. But yeah, this build is fun. And we'll go ahead and showcase what it can do. So I'm gonna go ahead and showcase this build on the chapel uh, with 250% solo. So let's go ahead and get into this and see how this works. And yay, the dogs are barking right now.
So it's not necessarily the fastest that you can do. Like obviously you can do faster with the bunny, but still it's very quick, easy run. This is usually a longer dungeon because of the fact that you have to do the area deactivations. You have to wait on spawns. And all in all, it was very quick and easy, and I got the full score very, very easily. Uh, and I just zipped through, laying fire puddles down, and it was, it was easy. And thanks to the new dungeon XP thing, you can run these, you can get lots of XP for just completing them. Uh, so they're good ways to level up, and with this kind of build, you can constantly keep leveling your character, you can keep building up being coming stronger. And even with all these extra additive stuff that I had, this was still pretty easy. So if you don't put all that on, just do the 100%. No additive bonuses, you still get all the good XP, and you can still do this very quickly and easily with a build like this, so. Yeah, and this is also one of those ones you have to farm for the Haley parts, so if you're looking for Haley, this is, you know, it's pretty good. Okay, so now that we have showcased the Flora's Lava build, it is time, and we understand how to do mobbing really well with Blair. What we can now do is we can focus on our bossing. Build. And yes, these there are um, ways you can utilize skill power for bossing, but I found this to be a lot of fun. It's a firearm based bossing build with Blair. We're going to be utilizing the transcendent mod Backdraft. Backdraft converts his passive to firearm critical hit rate increase and firearm critical hit damage increase instead of skill crit increases. Additionally, his second ability, Extinguish, converts to a weak point and firearm attack increase per flame zone um, stack acquired. So this can produce a 30% increase to weak point damage and a 25% increase to firearm attack off of this buff alone, while your hitmaster is going to give you 10% firearm crit damage, just for having any zones out, and 25% critical hit rate for your firearm added on, and these are going to take into account your firearms modules rather than your character's modules. So you don't need to build a ton of crit on your character. You don't need to build a ton of um, power onto your character. You just need to build it into your firearm. And now this build will enhance your firearm more, leaving you more room in your build for defensive capabilities. So let's go ahead and quickly show off what uh, this can do. So I'm going to go ahead and showcase my Enduring Legacy, just what it does as a base. So as you can see, we're able to do crits of about 150, 160, 170,000. If I get a weak point, I get an, about 300,000 on that enemy. Now let's see what happens when I get all this stacked up. So you're going to throw your ult, and then you're going to throw it on two fire puddles and activate Extinguish. You're going to suck up all that fire, and now I'm critting a lot more often. When I do hit them in the head, I'm still hitting for, I'm hitting for almost 400,000. It'd be easier to shoot this guy, probably. As you can see, getting 376s, 379s, 397s. Lots of damage, and most of the shots are critting off of this, too. And my ultimate is already back off cooldown again. So, let's go ahead and take a look at what makes this build work. So, first off, I'll showcase my gun. So, this is my Enduring Legacy. It's not perfect. It could probably be built up even better, but this is what I've got going right now. So we have sharp precision shot that gives us additional fire rate and recoil reduction and firearm attack as we continue to attack up to 10 stacks. So with the Enduring Legacy, we start attacking really quickly. Once we start going, this thing builds up our fire rate. It reduces the recoil from our action reaction, and it'll give us bonus firearm attack um, in the first stages of it so that we can just build up to more and more damage. I have the fire rate concentration as well to give a little bit more firearm crit damage multiplier, and it offsets the fire rate of the sharp precision shot. This may not be necessary. I just liked it. Uh, this also show this also provides a lot of just extra uh, power because we do have a large magazine size, so getting going faster and having overall larger fire rate increase will help us burn through our clip a lot faster, which is massive. I think I have 184 thanks to the expanded weapon charge and the rounds per magazine increase that is in the substats of the gun. 
that I rolled uh, before. Rifling re reinforcement and action reaction gives us a massive firearm attack boost up to 93% there. With a recoil um, detriment that is taken out of the equation thanks to sharp precision shot. Then I have better insight for firearm crit rate increase, better concentration for firearm crit damage increase, as well as concentration priority for a massive firearm crit damage increase with a reload time modifier reduction to offset it. So our reloads take a little bit longer, but with a 184 magazine size, we are able to still produce a lot of damage without having to worry about reloading all that often. And we can always look to reload during bosses immunity phases or whenever we need to move around to dodge something or if they do the jump in the air thing. There are plenty of opportunities we can take advantage of to uh, reload without making this reload detriment all that big of a deal. And then we have weak point sight, weak point damage increased by 35%. This plays into our secondary buff. This is going to amplify that value even more so it works out well. And we've got fire enhancement so that we can add some additional fire attack to our Enduring Legacy because if Enduring Legacy, if we attack something while it's burning, we do a more firearm attack damage because of its effect here. On hitting enemy inflicted with burn, firearm attack plus 11%. And at the same time, we are also reducing its fire resistance and fire resistance per stack by shooting it a ton of times and applying this debuff. So by having fire attack on it, it gives us a chance to actually inflict burn via our gunshots, which also takes into account our crit hit rate and our crit hit damage of our gun stats rather than of stats like our um, our skills, which aren't really doing a lot of damage. We're going to get a lot more out of the fire, uh, out of the burning from our firearm buffs. Uh, you do not need a gun like Enduring Legacy. You can opt for guns like Thunder Cage or you can even use uh, Eternal Willpower. Uh, this is a better Eternal Willpower. Uh, you can use Secret Garden. You can use Greg's Reversed Fate. You can use Excava even if you wanted to. I don't really know. I haven't played much enough with this gun to really know exactly what's going on with it, so maybe not. And heck, you could probably even figure out a sniper rifle based build with this, because sniper rifles have really good firearm attack and good weak point stuff, so you could probably even make use of that with this build. But the big thing is we are going to be amplifying our damage for our enduring legacy here by giving it much more by giving it many more opportunities to crit, effectively giving us almost guaranteed crit per shot, and then boosting the damage of those crits, and further boosting damage of weak point hits, so we deal massive damage when we hit a weak point and we crit. So how exactly are we doing that? How are we getting our buffs to last very long? And get all that done well let's go ahead and take a look at this so currently our extinguish buff will last for 39 seconds with fire puddles lasting for 29.2 seconds and our ultimate stated to have a 65.8 second cooldown we can reduce that further if we swap the time distribution for an mp accelerant which is uh, for mp conversion which would result in us having a 39.1 second cooldown not counting into not counting in the multi-talented 20.5% skill cooldown from using a dimension skill, that will further lower this cooldown even lower so that we actually have the ult available whenever we need to set up our flame zones again. So MP conversion helps you do that uh, easier. If you would if you don't have MP conversion or you don't have it leveled up, or you just don't want the max MP reduction. Uh, I also found that you can work with time distribution just as well. Time distribution is a better budget alternative because you only need to level it up five times rather than ten. And it provides a little bit of extra HP for survivability. So whichever you'd prefer in that slot, both work pretty well. But MP conversion will offer you more overall value. You are going to probably need to utilize your second skill a little bit more often with MP conversion because you're going to have less MP overall. But I can show you how that works. So all you'd really do is you throw your ult, throw down two fire puddles, pop your second skill. It's going to be almost off cooldown. Pop it again. And look, all your MP's pretty much back. Easy peasy. You've got your five stacks, and you can just go to town. And just see how much damage you can just kind of dish out there. And oh no, my fire puddles are going to start disappearing soon. Oh well. One, two, three. Suck it back up. So with this setup, with MP conversion, 
you almost have no cooldown for your ultimate, so you can just keep it going and keep the buffs going and keep all of your firearm crit stacks up all the time. You just need to make sure you keep your mana going by either killing the roly polies, the kingfishers, or by utilizing your second skill a lot more often. The fire puddles are going to stay on the floor for a longer period of time, so you are going to be able to use it whenever you want to. And additionally, you do not even need a full fire puddle like setup to get your thing back. You can just set one fire puddle as long as your buff is active. Just hitting yourself once with one puddle will refresh it. And if you need to build it up at a slower rate for any reason, you can just lay down two fire puddles, suck them in. This would add two stacks. And then if you did it again, this would add two more stacks. It counts the number of fire puddles that you've consumed and adds to the stacks. I'll showcase that in a second once these have fully depleted. Okay, so now they're gone. So one fire puddle, suck it up, gets me one stack. If I did it again, I'm now at two stacks of the buff. If I go ahead and place down one more fire puddle and suck it up again, now I'm at four stacks of the buff. So it really just counts how many fire puddles you have down and when you consume them, it'll just refresh the stacks and it will add to the buff. So you don't necessarily need to have all five at, at once on the floor, but it's just easier when you go in to start a fight, to just go ahead and do alt and then drop two puddles and then suck them all up in one go. Then you have your fire puddles out and ready to go. That's boosting your crit rate. You have your buff active and ready to go. That's boosting your firearm attack and weak point. And then you can just really start laying into the Colossi as you just burn away their weak points and deal a lot of damage to them, which we'll showcase in a little bit. So what mods do you use to achieve this sort of um, status? So because we don't need to worry so much about uh, boosting our power in our in our uh, Descendants mods, because it's all in our firearm, we can focus instead on boosting our survivability and our duration and cooldown. So... We have increased HP and increased defense. In fact, let me swap these around. There you go. Increased HP, increased defense, and battle of stamina. These are survivability mods. I like these because they play well with uh, my external components, which are HP and defense focused. And they give a large chunk of HP and enough defense to cover about 24, 25,000, which is a nice, good spot in terms of damage reduction. So you don't need to worry about putting a ton more into that. You can just work with these three. And Battle of Stamina grants you more skill duration, which we love because that increases the duration of our fire puddles. It increases the duration of our extinguish buff. So it's all around really good. Additionally, we run skill duration increase from skill extension and maximize duration. Since we're not focused on the power output of our skills, skill power modifier reduction does nothing in this regard. It just lowers the damage that the fire pools do and the damage that the burn from the fire pools do, but those are separate burn stacks from what our gun will be applying, so it's not that big of a deal. In fact, it just does help us apply a burn to the boss initially, so that the first couple of shots we take will actually still be applying our firearm attack increase for our Enduring Legacy without having any real detriment to us, because we're not running any fire power boosting stuff. No more, no, you know, fire skill power boost, no dimension skill power boost. So, no matter what, all of these are still doing ridiculous, ridiculously low damage anyway. And my reactor is set to Thunder Cage, not Enduring Legacy. But if you had an Enduring Legacy one, you would be doing a little bit more damage. But you do so much damage with the firearm, it's not needed. After that, I have this one slot here for auto immunity. This is incoming damage modifier minus 10.5%. This is perfectly fine. But this is really the spot for shot focus. And it's where I'd put it if I had one. Graduating Dictator College, and this is me taking over the world with smiles, and this is where I'd put a trophy. If I had one! Sorry, lost the happy, but the happy's back! But I didn't, I tried to get shot focus for, I've been trying to get it for like a month. I cannot get it to combine, I cannot get it out of the combination system, so it's just not, it's not showing up. But this is where you'd put shot focus. If you had it, shot focus boosts your firearm attack, so that gads even more power to your character. <clears throat> After that, it's all cooldown. So Nimble Fingers for skill cooldown, MP Conversion for skill cooldown, and Multi-Talented for dimensional active skill, skill cooldown minus 20.5%. The last slot is uh, an Almondine slot that I socketed for the use of all of the different immunity um, ultimate mods. 
So perfect anti venom, as well as dang it, where are they? Uh, heat release and uh, insulated conductor and antifreeze solution. You can slot any of these in to protect yourself from electrocution, frostbite, burn, and poison, as well as giving you a boost to your resistance of whatever type it is. I would say it's pretty much just for these slots here. And you can always reslot this with another socket type to have it even more flexible. Uh, but this is just the flux slot. And we don't really need a ton of ton else in our in our descendant build because there isn't much else we can add. I mean, we could f maybe f squeak in a little bit of extra duration as a sub stat from something, but that doesn't really do much of anything. And uh, <clears throat> there's not really many other mods that we can use to boost our firearm stats. So it's really just cooldown, survivability, and uh, duration. And that's it. How would I go about setting this up from a base standpoint uh, from the start? So if, as as for the last build, increase HP, increase defense are going to be your go-to first. Then I would say probably get your duration going with skill extension and maximize duration. That'll let your buffs be active longer. That way, at least when you start a fight, <clears throat> you can start a fight really strong. And then during the like immunity phases, you can sort of like work to just um, pick up extra ammo, get your HP back up by killing the Kingfishers and the Roly Polies and stuff, and by breaking weak points like on the Swamp Walker and whatnot. And then by that point, maybe all of your stuff's back up. You can start throwing down fire, start buffing yourself up again. And remember, as I showcase to you, you can go ahead and lay down two fire puddles. Or you can lay down three fire puddles, then buff yourself twice. And that will give you the maximum buff. So even if your crit rate isn't as high as it could be, with three puddles, it's still going to be decent. Uh, your at least fire attack and weak point damage will be high because of your um, extinguish buff. After that, I would start slotting in your skill cooldown stuff, your multi-talented, your nimble fingers, your MP conversion. <clears throat> MP conversion and multi-talented will get you the biggest boost. MP conversion and nimble fingers will get you your biggest boost. But nimble fingers and multi-talented are going to cost you less to implement, I think, because multi-talented doesn't have as many that you need to slot into, and nimble fingers also does not as well, so the cost on these will be easier. So these are better to invest in a little earlier. MP conversion will give you a great deal of cooldown, though. And then after that, I would slot in the Battle of Stamina, uh, the autoimmunity and the perfect anti-venom slots, this flex slot being last, obviously. And if you do have shot focus, you can slot in shot focus probably after you slot in your uh, duration and your defensive skills, your HP and defense and whatnot. Uh, because then you're going to boost yourself even more for those first like 30 seconds or so. And then after that, you can set up your cooldown so you can actually do it more often in a fight and not have to wait through these longer timers. <clears throat> but if you go at it really hard, I can show you with a, I can show you what happens when you have to go at like a, a hard devourer fight. You can burn that thing so quickly. You do not need all the cooldown in the build. So just having the duration so that you don't have to keep refilling things and your buffs are active for that whole initial part of the fight, you'll be good to go. And for the other fights, having the increased HP and defense lets you live through a lot of things a lot easier, as you'll see from an obstructor fight where other players went down a little quicker and we took a we took the brunt of some hits without really batting an eye you know it was perfectly fine uh, so let's go ahead and get into those fights really quickly and uh, then we'll wrap up this uh we'll wrap up this video
And there's the obligatory beat up devourer fight. Okay, so that wraps up the build guide here for my uh, Floor is Lava and the firearm based uh, backdraft build that we have for Blair. I found these builds to be incredibly fun and very, very potent uh, for dealing with your standard mobbing experience and for your standard Colossi bossing experience. Now, I know that a lot of people just want to put their characters like Bunny and characters like Lepic and the new character Haley because it's like, ooh, one shot every enemy or every boss. And I get it, you know, you want to feel extremely powerful, but I know that not everybody loves playing those characters. And sometimes you want to play a character that you can resonate with, that you like the look of, that you like the feel of, and you like the play style of. And that's how I feel about Blair. So I wanted to share that with everybody and sort of give you an option to play other things rather than just like some of these other characters. So it won't perform as well as some of these other characters will, but it's still a solid, these are still solid builds. They'll still help you clear out the bulk of the content and do whatever it is you want to do in the game. And you can still have fun doing it if you enjoy playing Blair, you know, throwing down a lot of fire, fire, flamethrower, large fireballs, loading up your weapon and just burning something to the ground. You know, you can get a lot done with this character. And he's one of my favorites in the game. I hope that you enjoy this video and that uh, I can show you some of what I love about this character and how he plays. And uh, yeah, if anybody has any characters that they want to see some builds for, I am always looking for a new character to try out and, and put work into and see what kind of stuff they can do. So if you want to see me try and figure out some builds for some other characters that maybe you haven't quite uh, nailed uh, down a build for yet, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to play this build, if you want either of these builds and you want to give them a shot yourself and you come up with anything new or interesting for it uh, that you want to share, go ahead and let me know in the comments below and I can pin those to the top and we can keep the information going. And if you want to talk about any of the stuff that you've seen in this video, if you've if I've made any kind of mistakes and you want uh, and I, I can go ahead and check it, let me know in the comments. I'll go ahead and check it. And if I did make a mistake, I'll go ahead and post it to the top of the comments. I'll pin it up there so that the information is readily available for everyone watching this video. Because here's the thing, I'm a human, I make mistakes sometimes, and if I do, just let me know, and I will try to correct it in the best way I can. But I'm excited to keep doing more builds for this game and try out other characters. I'm working on getting access to Haley because I'm trying to grind her out instead of buying her this time, like I did with Luna, and it is taking a while, so I apologize for that. Um, but once I can, I will share with you some thoughts on Haley or even some other Descendant builds that I come across as I'm playing. So, uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments regarding this video or the game itself, please leave them in the comments below and I will respond to them as quickly as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing for more TFD content. I will be doing some content for other games as well over the next uh, couple months because we have a lot of different uh, releases coming out for games I've been excited to try. And we do have a little bit of content lull here going with TFD between now and October 10th and then between October 10th and December. You know, there's gonna be little bits of stuff to do but not a ton to fill the entire gap of time. So I'll still be doing TFD content but if you see another type of video pop up for like Diablo or Path of Exile or something, um, I may be trying my hands at some of those too. So just be on the lookout for that. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a good one and I will see you in the next video. Peace.